Hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be learning about a scary sounding word called stoichiometry. And by the end of this, I want you to be able to explain stoichiometry and use mole ratios in an action line. First of all, we have to know that stoichiometry, there are a couple different types. The one we're going to be talking about is reaction stoichiometry. And the definition is a, the quantitative study of chemical reactions. Now, quantitative means dealing with numbers. And we think of it a lot of times as just how much of this makes how much of that. A fundamental starting point for stoichiometry is a properly balanced chemical equations. This one is not balanced. If you don't know how to balance chemical equations, then really you need to go back and watch the video balancing chemical equations and then get with me and check it out so that you know how to balance them. Otherwise, you really can't even start stoichiometry right. This one's not balanced now, but watch this. Now it is. And those coefficients that are in front for the balancing, they mean something in stoichiometry, which we're about to find out. Stoichiometry, the, from the balanced chemical equation, is really just like a recipe. This is a recipe for Snickers cookies, which sound really yummy. These are all the ingredients that go into Snickers cookies, and these would be the reactants then. And they have a, they're quantitative, which means that they have numbers that go with them, and they have measurements. And this is the product. You get 60 yummy, delicious Snickers cookies. These are not Snickers cookies. Those are some cute little mole cookies. But if we wanted only 30 cookies, then we could change the recipe. We could cut these things in half. And likewise, if we wanted 120 cookies, we could double all these. By knowing how many we we're going to make in our products and how many we need in the reactants, we can adjust it to whatever we want to do. If you continue to think now about this balanced chemical equation as just like a recipe, these are our reactants. We need six of these LIBRs to react with two of these, and this is what we end up making two of the lith lithium phosphides and three bromines. And so these really could mean we can think of these as mole ratios. A good way, we could think of them as atoms or molecules also, but when we do stoichiometry, we think of that as six moles of LIBR react with two moles, and that's the abbreviation for moles, of phosphorus to produce two moles of lithium phosphide and three moles of the diatomic molecule bromine. It's really important that we know that each of these coefficients stand for moles. And so that's the way we're going to read it from now on. Well, I hope you're sitting down as you're listening to this because action lines are coming back. Today is a really simple action line, so don't let it really scare you. Using mole ratios in action lines is the only way to change from one substance to another in stoichiometry. If I want to know how much of this, I have a certain amount of lithium bromide, and I want to know how much lithium phosphide it makes, I have to use mole ratios. That's just these numbers that are in the front, because those all represent a balanced chemical equation that represent the number of moles. So if I get a question like this, how many moles of phosphorus are needed to make 22.6 moles of bromine? I'm going to make a simple action line on this. I'm going to start out with what I'm given, 22.6 moles. And I have to put in bromine, which is the BR2. That's this stuff right up here. And then what I'm going to do is use these mole ratios in order to change them over. I remember on a action line, I copy down my units, moles of BR2. And once I'm at moles of BR2, I can go to moles of anything else on this balanced chemical equation that I want to go to. This says I want to get to phosphorus. And it doesn't matter that I'm going backwards. These are all balanced chemical equations just like a recipe. So I can go to moles of phosphorus. That's on my balanced chemical equation. So where do I get the numbers for these? Well, I just copy them from my balanced chemical equation. Two in front of the phosphorus three in front of the bromine, and so I put them in, two moles of phosphorus, three moles of bromine. I'm copying them from right up there in my balanced chemical equation. Look what happens. Moles of bromine cancel out. I'm left with moles of phosphorus. I plug this in my, in my calculator, 22.6. Oh, we need our calculator every day for the rest of the year now, too. 22.6 times 2 divided by 3. We multiply by everything on top. We divide by everything on bottom, and we get... 
this number, 15.00066666, and we say, where do I round that off to? Well, we got to go back and look at our sig figs. We had two, or sorry, three sig figs right here. These are exact quantities because they're matching up with each other, so I need only three sig figs. That one is my first one, then the five, then the zero. I look at this one that tells me I round it up, and so my answer is 15.1 moles of phosphorus, a simple action line that you can do. So here's a combustion reaction that we have to do some action lines on. But you notice there's a problem, first of all, with this reaction. You know what it is? That's right, it's not balanced. So we're going to balance it right now. There we go, now I have it balanced. This is one that I had to double all the coefficients because the oxygens were even on one side and odd on the other side. So double the coefficients and we get it all taken care of. Now remember, these are mole ratios. So it takes two of these, two moles of this, react with seven moles of this to make four moles of this and six moles of this. So if I wanted to do mole ratios and I said in the balanced chemical equation, what's the mole ratio of C2H6 to CO2? It would be two to four. Two moles of this for every four moles of this. And it doesn't matter if I'm going both on this side of the arrow or going one side to the other, they're all mole ratios. So if we take a look at this first problem here, to make 14.2 moles of carbon dioxide, how many moles of oxygen are needed? I start out with what I'm given, 14.2 moles of carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Yes, you have to write the CO2 in there. What's going to go down here on the bottom? That's right, moles of CO2. I copy down. I didn't put a number down there. I'll get that from the balanced chemical equation. I want to get to oxygen. So I can go anywhere I want when I'm at moles because of our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So where do I get these numbers from? There's my moles of oxygen. There's my moles of CO2. I copy. And so CO2 had a 4 in front of it. Oxygen has a 7 in front of it. Moles of CO2 cancel each other out. I'm left with moles of O2, which is exactly what I wanted. So I get my answer in 3 sig figs, moles of O2, and I got 24.9 because I did 14.2 times 7 divided by 4. The next one down here, I want you to, hey, why don't you pause it right now? And you try to do this other one. You could watch me do it all day long, but it doesn't really do you any good. So go ahead, push pause. Go on, push the pause right now. Pause. It's the little two lines that go up and down. Pause it. And then you try it. See what you can do. All right, so this is going to be 8.6 moles of C2H6. And then as we go through here, moles of C2H6 on the bottom. And moles of O2 is what I wanted to get to on top. I copy my number 7 there in a 2 from the balanced chemical equation. Moles of C2H6 cancel out. And when I do this in 2 sig figs, I get 30 point moles of O2. Okay, so here are three problems for you to try now. I've given you a skeleton equation. This is not balanced, so you're going to have to balance this puppy first. So balance the equation, and then tell me, first of all, how many moles of Al are needed to completely react with 1.6 moles of Cu2CO3, and then how many moles of copper are made when 4.16 moles of Al react, and how many moles of copper are made when 12.9 moles of Cu2CO3 react. So three action lines. They're just one steppers each. You can do this. Don't tell me you can't. So have it all set up and get it taken care of. You'll surprise yourself. Have a great day. All right, now if you stuck around, then you get the bonus of seeing the answers here. When I calculated these out, this first one right here, I got 1.1 moles of Al for that first one. The second one, I got 12.5 moles of copper cu and then the last one i got 25.8 moles of copper and so if you're not getting those answers then maybe you didn't balance the equation correctly so check out your balancing the equation in front of that copper at the end you should have a six you should have a three in front of the cu2 co3 a uh, two in front of l nothing or an understood one in front of al2 co33 and a six in front of the copper all right, now have a great day.